Welcome to TradeTheNBI.com. This is John's reports for the 7th of March. Bit of an inside day yesterday as we uh, stayed above the ABM yellow, shot up, but then sold off later in the day. Um, and then from there, uh, futures have put us right back down onto the ABM yellow in the pre-market. The softness from the MBI, uh, magenta here below the 33 and underneath the yellow. So, yes, that's a bull situation, not being able to sustain itself and not enough shortage just to really cause any dramatic idea of uh, you know sell off at this particular stage but you know the doc spread which was clean but with the orange already rising and beginning to fade you'd have to have a spike back up of the orange in order for that to be a continuation though it's still easy because you just take the abm yellow and below that is definitely on the short side and above uh, would be the bullish uh, side of the situation uh, you know and we see a lot of the headwinds with you know the nasdaq and some of the corporations suffering from you know headwinds due to economic conditions and rising rates. This is that uh, in between flex and the reality is until there's, you know, some finalization uh, from readings and or indication that the economy is slowing significantly, uh, you still have to be, you know, more equity exposed. I mean, the reality is people jumping into treasuries like it is now, way outside of where current rates are, uh, the expectation being that the Fed is going to cut into uh, an interesting scenario, which is oil already elevated and rising, creating a rate of inflation increase that's way beyond the Fed's target. So are they going to cut just because it's an election year? And then you've got a situation where they're cutting rates into uh, already rising inflation it makes no sense whatsoever. But, uh, you know, strange things happen in election years and this is what the market usually enjoys, and it's usually a push upward because they know that there's going to be accommodation in every way, shape, or form uh, to help the current administration because everybody wants to keep their jobs. But the reality is you're just spending huge amounts of money uh, to sustain minimal growth at this particular stage. I mean, when you're trillions of dollars of deficit, we talked about this, is why you see some of the policies supporting the war because that, without that, the manufacturing numbers would have been horrific. Um, and it, it just creates a spiral that uh, starts to accelerate and we'll see how that's going to play out the euro of course benefits from that and this belief that the fed is going to cut and move it closer to the ecb rate which uh, is ridiculous because they can't really raise rates because they've got no growth um, so it becomes an interesting situation where you have to have a situation where uh, commodities like gold and that take off. Uh, there's no other way around it. Uh, it's been long subdued, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, you can see where things are headed. And if you continue to even think about cutting rates, uh, gold has nowhere to go but straight up. And the counterplay on that has been through uh, your cryptocurrencies as well uh, as a secondary store of value outside of the dollar. And this is why we've seen this dramatic move from Bitcoin and that uh, beyond the fact that there's the ETF exposure that people can get into it without actually physically being in the actual commodity. Uh, ETH is outperformed because it has a practical application uh, of usage and don't think governments have slowed down or stopped in any way, shape or form about the idea of uh, cryptocurrency uh, from a national standpoint. Uh, of course, that becomes a game changer and how that affects all the other cryptos. Uh, it's a whole secondary world that people really haven't discussed a whole lot of. But uh, from a market play, we can see from 50K it came back down to the zero, shot back up, took that long exposure to the upside. They sold that out and a little bit of weakness uh, back in between that. But uh, overall, uh, we've got a complete reset uh, of everything. It's just a matter of our bulls going to show up to uh, push things back up. Uh, I think we're just going to continue to see a lot more of the same volatility where, like we saw in the morning, the big pump once the market opened, only to sell off midday, back down to the lows, clear out the stops, rinse and repeat. Uh, the post market here has been a little soft as they look for more uh, stops. And as soon as you clear them all out, and it jumps right back up. So uh, this is the game back and forth. And I think we're going to see a bit more of this uh, uh, sideways action before we have a little bit more of a fade uh, if more negative uh, readings come out and they don't see any uh, practical accommodation. Because certainly from what uh, Powell was saying the other day, they don't seem all that accommodating. But I think 
the market believes they're going to be forced to. And the question becomes, do we see a liquidity crunch, which would be uh, one of those uh, back-end crises that would uh, cause something more of a market uh, terror. You can already see the beginning of a little bit of a VIX move as uh, some of these uh, ranges are a little bit outside what was expected, uh, though seemingly to me it was pretty obvious to expect them because um, the push upward, um, while justifiable in some aspects, uh, you've got some pretty frothy uh, uh, readings and it just depends too on the rate of inflationary growth and what we see from oil and uh, further developments, you know, the Red Sea and that, and if that creates a crippling effect in any way, shape or form on supply. So, uh, you know, there's still a lot of things to keep an eye on, but Fortunately, their readings are pretty clear for us, so we just continue to follow them and uh, keep watching that macro situation develop. As always, though, anything relevant, I'll put it on the Skype chat. Have a good one. Trade well.